Praise the Lord, saints. This is Willie E. Hoskins, Jr., pastor of the Assembly of the Saints. Church number two, right here on the beautiful, the beautiful city of Norfolk, Virginia. Amen. And I thank you for joining us today. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanking him for all that he has done. This is a day and a time where the enemy is trying to shut us down. He's trying to slow things down so we can't do the will of God. Come go with me as I preach today on the word and the thought of Take the initiative to do the will of God. Amen. I love you to life. Follow me. And praise the Lord. I'm right here listening to those words of praise coming from you. Amen. As good as God has been to me, I can't afford now. To give him praise. Amen. And the last part of it is hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. God has been so good to us. Amen. Even in the time that we're living in, God is still good. I bring you greetings. Amen. From our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I'd like to extend honor to our very, very beautiful, amen, co-pastor, your first lady. My first lady and only lady, Co-Pastor Hoskins, amen, for rendering us that beautiful song, amen. We want to give honor, too, to the late Bishop George F. Haskins and his wife, Pastor Diane Haskins, who is now overseer of the Assembly of the Saints, number two, right here in the beautiful city of Norfolk, Virginia. We give honor to all our clergy, the ministers, the missionaries, the deacons, amen, the evangelists. We thank God for all of you and my family, and my children, and my grandchildren, and you, you, and you. I thank God for all of you who have joined us by telephone and by YouTube. Amen. The Lord has a word for you today. Amen. And I thank him because it came to me first. Amen. Hallelujah. We're living in a time where folk don't understand what is really happening because the devil has cloaked itself Amen. And blinded the eyes of the leaders. Amen. Therefore, if the blind leads the blind, all shall fall into the ditch. But God has a chosen few, good God Almighty, whose eyes are wide open. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We thank God for the word. I'll be coming from scripture that is familiar to you. Amen. I try and I hope I don't bring anything to you that's not familiar. That will let me know that you're not in your word. Amen. So scripture that is familiar is a good thing. You've heard it before because you've been in your word. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll be coming from, hallelujah, the Old Testament, 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verses 23 through 31. And then I'll be coming from the New Testament, Luke 10, verses 1 through 3. Amen. Amen. I'll give you a few minutes to get it. First Samuel, chapter 17, verses 23 through 31. And Luke 10, verses 1 through 3. Amen. God is good. You are you looking? You can shout hallelujah. God is good. <laughs> hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for giving a good a wonderful God, a magnificent God. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. Hallelujah. In the name of the Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And my wife can say, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First Samuel 17, starting at verse 23. And it reads, And he and as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion of the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistine, and spoke according to the same words as David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel, he has come up, and it shall be 
that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free from Israel. And David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? And he taketh away the reproach of Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered after the same manner, saying, So it shall be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his oldest son, eldest son, amen, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab was angered. Anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why comest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And turn, and he turned from toward, to, he turned from him toward another, and spake after the same manner to the people. Answered him again after the former. And when the word was heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul. And he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail, fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine. Luke 10, 1-31 After these things, the Lord appointed other seventies also sent, and also sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whether he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest is great, but the labors are free. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I have sent ye forth as lambs among wolves. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Father, in the matchless, mighty, marvelous name of Jesus Christ, we come to you as humble as we know how. We thank you for being a good God. And without you, we could do nothing. Lord Jesus, we ask right now that your spirit would take over. Lead me and guide me. Empty me of selfishness, pride. Fill me up with the Holy Spirit that I may speak to your people and they will get your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, Satan, the Lord rebuke you and the blood of Jesus stands against you. Amen? Amen. 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 My thought for this evening is taking the initiative to do God's will. Amen? Taking the initiative to do God's will. Amen. One thing I learned in this life there is that we have to take the initiative to do some things. Amen. It's just some things that you shouldn't have to be asked to do. Especially when you're married. Amen. Married people know what I'm talking about. Amen. And if you're not married, you still can bring you into focus. It's just some things that are, 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 are present in our life that we know we should do without even being asked. Amen? We know. Amen. It, it, simple things we know that we should do. And we don't have to be asked to do those things. That is called taking the initiative. Amen? We have been commissioned. We know this. God commissioned us years ago. Jesus, he told us to go into all their preaching and teaching. Giving his word to all people. Amen. Letting them know that he is the way. Amen. 
John 14 and 6, Jesus said what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. Amen? So we know that we are commissioned to do so. So when we see people, dying men and women, people who need the Lord, there is nobody, we don't need nobody to hunch us or pep us up to tell us that they need the Lord. Come on, somebody. We automatically know it, and we take the initiative to present our Lord and Savior to them. Why? Because there is a cause. Amen? Amen. Joshua had eight sons. Mm-hmm. Y'all know the word of God. He had eight sons. Amen? And the three oldest sons had followed Saul into the battle. They had signed up for the draft. Amen? And they were fighting against the Philistines. David, he was the youngest son. And the reason why David was on the battlefield because Jesse had told him to take parches of corn, some loaves of bread, to the army of Israel. Take some cheese to the captains of the armies of Israel. Amen? And when he did that, he told him to make his pledge. Amen? So David had a reason, one, to be there. To be there. Amen? Number two, I want you to understand that everything that we do, God has it under control. It was a reason for David to be there so God could show up and show up. Have I got a witness? Amen. Amen. So David did just what? Jesse said he got up early in the morning. He got somebody to keep the sheep for him, and he ran out to the battlefield. And the battle was already set in array. Everybody was already up in an uproar, amen, because this giant, this champion of the Philistines was so big. Come on, somebody. Anybody ever had of a giant of a problem or a giant of a situation and it looked like you weren't going to be able to make it out? Hallelujah. This was what they were facing. They already knew that we are defeated. We are not going to be able to get out of this. No one can defeat this man. He's nine feet tall. Look at his we was being. I mean, he is just through mongrels. He makes us look like grasshoppers. He smacks us and makes us forget our names. Amen. He, he, he's just too great to defeat. Amen. And David hearing this. Amen. He heard. He overheard. He overheard what they were talking. Say, if, 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 if whoever defeats this giant. Amen. Say, the king is going to make him rich. And give him his daughter and his father's house would never have to be under Israel order again. He would be free from Israel. And David heard this thing, amen. But when he got there, something else was going on that you or I could not see with our eyes. And Eliab, he could not see it either. He thought his brother was just being naughty. He thought his brother had snuck down there just wanted to be outspoken and talking, get in the way, amen, but the spirit of the Lord, amen, led David there. Even though Jesse commanded him, the spirit of the Lord met him there. Can I get a witness? You know, I just want you to understand one thing. You got to take the initiative sometime just to get God's will done. You got to stand up and be accounted for to get the will of God done. And nobody needs to ask you. So while David was here, amen, in the midst of war, amen, David understood that this giant, hallelujah, was just too outspoken. Something was wrong with him. He must have fell and bumped his head. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that will defy the armies of the living God. That's what you ought to say sometimes. Who is this devil, this demon, this Lucifer that will defy, come on somebody, the almighty God. Who is he, hallelujah, that think he can come into my life and take what I, hallelujah, have obtained through God. Who is he who think he can bring depression into my 
We've got Jesus Christ. And the Lord said that if we would only speak a thing, it'll come into existence. Can I get a witness? So the Bible also lets us know that if we have submitted unto God, come on, when the giant enters into your life, when he comes, amen, running and tearing, you've got to say, I submitted to God. Say, and demand him to leave, and he's got to go. Amen. David didn't have all of that, but David knew one thing. Hallelujah. He told, hallelujah, his brothers and those that were around him. Come on, somebody. He said, let me tell you something. Hallelujah. Saul was there, too. He said, I, 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 I was tending my father's sheep. Oh, come on, somebody. And a lion and a bear came. Now, this is amazing. David said, and I caught him by his beard. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to him. That means he was in close contact. David was a warrior even before he knew he was a warrior. Ha, come on, somebody. Now, there's a lot of you out there that are warriors and don't know you're warriors. Hallelujah. You fight with the weapons of God because your, 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 your weapons are not carnal. Come on, somebody. But they're mighty and they're powerful. And we pull down strongholds. Amen. David said, I grabbed the lion by his beard and I slew him. And when I imagined that, I imagined him grabbing and his forearm. Come on, somebody, up under the chin of the lion. And he probably, come on, y'all don't want to talk to me. Hallelujah. But David said, I also slew a bear. Amen. And this uncircumcised Philistine is going to fall too. This is what I want to drive home to you. Nobody had to push David. Nobody had to urge him to go. Never was it a pep rally. Amen. Nobody said, oh, David, oh, David. Hallelujah. In fact, they looked at him like he was crazy. Because David said, I don't need your armor, Saul. I need my slingshot. And I'm going to get me five smooth stones. Come on, somebody. But he did not need anybody to pep him up. He took the initiative. David knew and saw that there was a cause. Amen. And if I could kill a bear, and if I could kill a lion, I can definitely kill this giant. Why? Because he's hallelujah coming against the army of God. Amen. He's uncircumcised. David had faith that God would deliver him into his hands. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Is anybody out there believe and got enough faith to know that whatever we're going through, God is able to deliver. Come on, somebody. you got to take the initiative to stand up, to pray, to believe God, to fast, to continue to do what you do in the name of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Taking the initiative to do God's will. Let me talk about something here. Look, hallelujah, the pandemic is going on. The enemy has shut the churches down. Come on, somebody. But there's still a cause. Hallelujah. There's still still a need. We still got to take the initiative to get God's word to the people, to the masses. Amen. There are still people dying everywhere. So God has provided YouTube and the telephones. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Social media. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Technology is so broad. And we would be a miss if we did not take advantage of this time. Come on, somebody. See, the end of thought, we would shut down. Oh, yeah, there are some churches who have just closed out. You best believe it. Some folks just give it up. I just can't do it no more. I can't go to church. I can't do nothing. I'm just shutting down. But God has commanded us to continue in his way. Jesus said, maintain until I come. Can I get a witness? How do you do? So we take the initiative to do God's will. Well, what are you talking about? Ain't nobody at that little church. What you there for? We take the initiative to do God's will. We come out to worship him, to lift him up, to give him glory, and thank him for the little plan that he gave us where we can worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah, we take the initiative to do so. No, no matter how to shake me and get me up out of bed and tell me to get dressed, hallelujah, and make it down here to the boulevard, amen, I come because there is a cause. Y'all don't want to talk to me. And there ain't nobody in the church now that pandemic is going on. Why are you out there cleaning the church? Well, it's still the house of God. And we treat it as such. Still come out. That's your time, one-on-one -on -one time, to get in touch with the Lord. Clean the church and do whatever needs to be done. Disinfected. Keep the devil out of here. Can I get a witness? Pray that the Spirit of the Lord was over the church of protection. Hallelujah. That's still a call. Take the initiative. 
People are dying. People are crying. People are hurting. People are sick. People are distressed. People are lonely. People are weary. They don't know which way to go. It seems we're not going to make it out of this stuff. And what do you know tonight? This is the biggest test for the church today. Not being able to come to the house of God to worship. Come on, somebody. Ain't that just like God to allow a test? Good God Almighty, this seems unsurmountable. A hurdle that seems that we can't jump it, amen. But I'm here to let you know, continue to do what you do. Stay on the telephones. Hallelujah. Talk to somebody about Christ. Tell somebody that Jesus is the Lord. He is our Savior. He is the King of Kings. Because there is a cause. Amen. And good God Almighty, we've got to take the initiative. Amen. To do God's will. Hallelujah. I'm happy on today. I feel good about some things. I know that God is moving by his spirit. Let me explain something to you. This is not the time to give up. I want to encourage you. This is not the time to throw in the towel. This is not the time to say it's all over. This is the time to stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. The Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run therein. We are the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. And he's protecting us. He's leading us. He's guiding us. Don't look around and say, well, what pastor ain't open the church? Pastor ain't open the church The God ain't open the church. Until the spirit of the Lord comes to me and say, now it's time to go, I will not go. Amen. I'll stand right on what I'm standing on and believe God. Amen. The devil has come and said, you're going to lose your members. Come on, somebody. You're not going to have the money to pay the mortgage. You won't have the money to pay. Hallelujah. The light bill and the water bill. you got to get the church. They need to see the devil put up all kinds of distractions, don't it? Hallelujah. And then you got your haters like you have coming on the other side. Oh, we doing our church. Ain't nothing gonna happen. You can catch corona if you walk outside your door. You can do this. You can do that. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear it. I'm going to obey the Lord. The Lord. Amen. I'm going to do what God say do. Hallelujah. And when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon me to let me know that we make this journey We'll be back in the house of God. But until then, we will serve him in spirit and in truth. And we will teach and preach the word of God just like we're doing it. Because although it looks like it's all over, there's still a cause. We got to take the initiative, hallelujah, to do God's will. Amen? The initiative. Y'all don't think I feel like giving up sometimes? Hallelujah, coming out, Minister Lucas and myself, coming out to bring these messages to you straight from God. You don't think he gets tired. Hallelujah, it seems like, what are we doing it for? We get, what, 10, 15 views, and that's all we get. And all, you know, it just seems like it's a lost call, but I'm here to let you know that ain't nobody about it, but the devil showing you all the negatives. The Bible says if one, come on somebody, if one just views it, and that's good God Almighty opportunity to save somebody's soul. Can I get a witness? Amen. So I want you to understand that the same thing that come before you come before me. The same messages that come, hallelujah, from God through me comes to me. Amen. We must take the initiative in order to do the will of God. We can't let nothing stop us. We can't hold back. Amen. Because I, I mean it to I already know the Lord has defeated the enemy. Amen. David was out there. He was fighting. Amen. He really didn't even have to fight. When he took his sling, God was in it. Come on, somebody. He swung it around, amen, and he let that stone go. And the Bible says it hit him straight in his forehead. Hallelujah. And I believe the power of God mm. fell upon the life. And God said, give me my life back. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. In order to show what? That there is a God in Israel. I want you to know tonight, there is a God, amen, hallelujah, in Norfolk, Chesapeake, Virginia Beach, Hampton, hallelujah, Newport News, 
all the surrounding areas. There is a God, hallelujah, that sits high and looks low. And Jesus Christ is his son, sitting on the right hand, making out and making intercession for us. He is our great advocate, amen. And we've got to understand that they're watching us to see if we're taking the initiative to do God's will. Hallelujah. Is there a cause? Is there a reason? What is our motive? Hallelujah. To do God's will. To press on. Move forward, regardless of what anybody sees. Through trial, through test, through tribulation, hallelujah, through heartbreak, through pain. Ha, good God Almighty. Good God, we've had so many deaths. That, 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 that death, that grieving spirit is so powerful, amen. But we still pressing our way through in order to do the will of God. We're not doing it because, hallelujah, somebody told us to, but we're taking the initiative, amen, hallelujah, to know that one day, hallelujah, like Paul said, I desire to know him in the resurrection and his death, I mean his death and his resurrection, can I get a witness, mm-hmm. knowing one day if Jesus got up, Good God Almighty, we're going to get up right along with him. And those that we've lost, or those that have gone on before, we're going to see them again. Hallelujah. But we've got to maintain until it's our time to go. We've got to take the initiative to do God's will. The reason is the harvest is plentiful. It's great. It's right. But the laborers are few. There's a reason and a call. Do God's will. Bring souls unto Christ. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. David. Ah, my man. I love it. Warrior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did God's will. And he did not stray. And what I love about David, he didn't choose another God. He stayed with the God of his fathers. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. He stayed with God and made plenty of mistakes. Hallelujah. But God, hallelujah, forgave him and gave him, hallelujah, hallelujah, the honor of a warrior. Amen. He said David was the apple of his eye. Good God Almighty. David took the initiative while the battle was going on. He didn't look at how the obstacle appeared to him. He just went forward, taking the initiative to do God's will. You will not defy the army of God. We will defy you. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. I want you to continue to fast and pray because the corona will not take over and devour us. Our God will devour you. Like I said, David threw the stone, but God steered it. Steered it home, right on point. Hallelujah. To eliminate the threat. God has eliminated, you better believe it, the threat threw in by us. We've got to continue to pray and believe God. In the battle, you know, the, the battle is mine. This is mine, says the Lord. Believe God. Believe he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Don't be weary. Don't be scared. Continue to do the will of God. And I understand. I understand. This is a scary time. It's a fearful time. Amen. And as I said before, fear is good sometimes because it keeps you cautious. Amen. You, you won't throw caution to the wind. It keeps you cautious. Amen. It keeps you aware of threats. Amen. So you can dodge these things. So fear is good sometimes. But we don't feel like we're scared. Come on somebody. Little wimps in the Lord. That's not true. The devil is a liar. We're strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Take the initiative saints. Take the initiative to do God's will. Continue to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continue to fast. Praise the Lord. Continue to do what God has called you to do. Don't stop now. There's no need to stop now. Continue. Amen. Send a text out to folk. Let them know who the Lord is. 
I know you got plenty of people in your phone who ain't saved, who don't know the Lord in the pardon of their sin. Send a text. The Lord loves you. The Lord needs you. Hallelujah. He wants you on his side. He didn't come that men should perish, but to give life. And that more abundant. You can send those tweets. Amen. Send those texts. Go ahead and do what you're afraid of. What you're scared of. They might come back or they might not want to talk to you anymore. So be it. Mm. You took the initiative to do God's will because you saw a cause. There was a cause. There was a need. There was a reason for you doing so. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Saint. If there's anybody out there who needs the Lord, anybody who has turned their back on the Lord, maybe you were saved and, hallelujah, you just fell back a little bit and you want to rededicate yourself. And maybe you were not saved. You're just doing your thing. It doesn't matter. The Lord will receive you as his own. All you got to do is repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you as humble as I know how. And right now, I understand that I'm a sinner and I've sinned against you and you only. I ask right now that you come into my life. Save me. Make me whole. And I denounce Satan and everything about him. I ask that you bless me with your Holy Spirit that I may live Holy, in the name of Jesus. God, in Jesus' name, I'm proclaiming this day that I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. It's just that easy. Hallelujah. But that's not all. You need to find you a church. A church that will give you the word of God. Pastor, a first lady, a co-pastor. Somebody who will teach you. And give you exactly what God has called you to have. Amen. Somebody that won't sugarcoat the word. That won't water it down. But give it to you just like the Bible says. You need that. Let the book talk. Amen. That you may be saved. We invite you to come here. 2801 East Virginia Beach Boulevard. Right here in the beautiful city of Norfolk, Virginia. The Assembly of the Saints. Church number two. Amen. Where we love on you. And give you what you need to go through these last and evil days. Come on. I invite you to come. Amen. And I love you to life. Remember, hallelujah, to take the initiative to do God's will because there is a reason and there is a cause. I love you to life and I bid you Godspeed.